is currently working on a second book, The Heritage of Grand Bahama and its People. He can be seen on YouTube on the National Art Gallery of the Bahamas website. He has been featured in all major local newspapers on ZNS TV, Bahamas at Sunrise, and Charles Carter's Bahamians. He has articles published in the current editions of the Bahamas Handbook and the Bahamas Historical Society's Journal. He has given many presentations to schools, social clubs, heritage festivals, Grand Bahamas Business Outlook, and the Bahamas Historical Society. He has lectured at the College of the Bahamas Northern Campus. He is married, the father of two, he is a member of the Bahamas Society of Engineers and the American Society of Mechanical Engineers. He is also a member of the Bahamas Historical Society, the Grand Bahama Heritage Foundation, and the Bahamas National Trust um, Industrial and Social History. Visual arts and uh, performing arts, sports, banking, anything technical in nature are uh, his passion. I am talking none other than Mr. Deraj D. Williams. Thank you. Now, um, are you going to introduce Will? Or are you going to talk about it or you want me to go on? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Don't let me steal your thunder. Mr. Williams, uh, as I said, has been a, a guest speaker here before. And he is going to talk on the church history of St. Stephen's Parish highlighting Grand Bahama. Grand Bahama has a church history that spans over 170 years. The first 100 years of this, of this history is dominated by two de denominations, the Anglicans and the Zion Soci Baptist Society. The slide show that he's going to present to us will highlight this rich history which brought a sense of stability to a largely neglected people. St. Stephen's Parish initially included Andros, Bimini, Berry Islands, and Grand Bahama. The Baptist Circuit included Abaco, but not Andros. It will be briefly, it will also briefly touch on the entry of other denominations to Grand Bahama over the past 70 years. Ladies and gentlemen, by your applause, please welcome Mr. Williams. Thank you. 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 Thank you
started in 1851, St. Stephen's is celebrating its 150th year in Eight Mile Rock this year. In 1871, they went to uh, St. Jude's, got started as the second church in Grand Bahama. In 1871, also a little later, was St. Barnabas. Yes, Grand Bahama had the first St. Barnabas. Okay. It later was taken down, and we'll see who replaced it. And in 1893, Mary Magdalene in West End. Now everybody's saying, well, West End was the first capital. No, Golden Grove was the first capital of Grand Bahama and all those. Uh, so uh, he was the first one. And it was an interesting story. Basically, the guy who was the principal at uh, Government High, uh, his father brought him to be admitted to Government High. I said, you know, so you know something, it's going to be hard because he has to come away from his family, he has to find some place to live. And guess what? I've just been asked to come to Freeport Anglican High and get them going in the right direction. So I'll be happy to have him uh, right at his home if you just allow me to reach their voice. <laughs> and that's how Captain Eddie Thomas got into Freeport Anglican High School and brought it around for me school for expatriate employees of the Port Authority being a school that accepted both expatriate employees and native students. Now remember, the governor didn't have a high school in Grand Bahama until Mr. Bo uh, took the all A school and brought it up to high school in the 70s. Okay. <laughs> so, and Bahamas come a long way, and maybe now a college of Bahamas campus. Obviously, we're going to ask the Bahamas, because their history starts about the same time, in 1939. In 1939, they were saying there were two places where the Anglicans were having services in, in homes, and there were five places that the Baptists were having services. In 1840, William MacDonald was sent to Grand Bahama to proclaim the gospel to his countrymen by the Zion Baptist missionary. Now, William MacDonald, hello, who has the case for the English Baptist of America? That is Zion, by the time, by the time it got to Grand Bahama, the English had sent a missionary that initially took over all the Baptist churches in, in addition to building Zion. Well, there was a falling out because the uh, Bethel and St. John's, they kind of allowed it because back then, how, how could we put it? The Methodists and the Baptists were not cons uh, considered a true religion. They could not bury and marry people in the capital. Uh, okay. And they had a hard time even holding, in fact, the church history of Grand Bahama is a little bit skewed because the Anglicans said they had the first church. Now, in kind of researching back, the Baptists might have been two years ahead, but remember, until I think the 1860s, the Anglican church was the big bully. Uh, sorry, I'm Anglican, let's not say bully. They, they, they were the top spot in town. <laughs> but the Methodists, had more people in Parliament, so they kind of derailed that. <laughs> and instead of just giving out money to the Anglican Church, now the state gave money to the Anglicans. Uh, the Presbyterians always also got money, all right? So just giving to the Anglicans and the Presbyterians, but the Presbyterians really didn't go out into the islands. Right? There is a Presbyterian Church now in Grand Bahama, but that didn't, that didn't happen until the 60s. So uh, basically, they're not allowed to call their buildings, churches. There were either chapels or meeting houses. So you can't have the first church in Grand Bahama if you have a chapel in Karen Grove and a chapel in Amar Rock, which cannot be called a church. <laughs> so you know, the, the Anglicans kind of embellish that portion of it now, but they don't, they, I don't think they quite realize how it came about. But 
by the 1860s, when the Anglican Church was what they called this is uh, disestablished, disestablished, because they were the established church of the Bahamas, and, and religion became a more level playing field. The others got, other than St. Andrews, Presbyterian Cook, and the Anglican Church, to call their meeting houses and chapels churches, and bury their dead, and perform marriages. <laughs> Now, he is said to proclaim the gospel of his countrymen by design missionary. The first day, uh, William MacDonald becomes the first native ordained minister, and also the ordained minister who can give communion in the Baptist church. He was very literate. And, believe it or not, most of the native teachers, they called them first, and most of them became reverends later, in the family <coughs> islands were literate. They handed in handwritten reports.